Hey, everybody. Welcome to Get to Know Your Wedding Pro. My name is Reed with Best Made Videos. We are a wedding videography company based out of West Seattle, Washington. And I'm so excited to be joined today. I was thinking about this. I think it's good that this is episode uh, 102 now that we're recording because I think I asked this person back when we were recording episode number two. Uh, and it's just been so busy with weddings and kids and you guys are always doing fun, creative stuff. And I'm just so glad that we could finally uh, get, you know, get some time to, to chat today. It's my friend Kate uh, Gansneeder with uh, G Squared Weddings. Why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us who you are and what you do. All right. I am Kate, like you just said, and I own G Squared Weddings Photography with my husband, Josh. Um, this is actually our eighth season, and we specialize in weddings for the couple that wander off the beaten path. And basically what that means is we just want people who want to create a day that is all about who they are as people and who they are as a couple and not feel like they have to bend to any actual traditions um, unless they want them. So, yeah, we kind of live how... We run our business with the adventure mindset and just really enjoy working with our couples for the stories that they get to tell and, and the family aspect of everything that we get to experience with them. So, And what, what I think I like uh, among many things about you and, and, and you guys and your business is, you know, we talk a lot on the podcast about, um, you know, some of us uh, want to be creatives and aren't necessarily inclined with business stuff or marketing or, you know, branding or, or coming up with, you know, people just want to like do florals or, you know, pictures or video, you, you know, you do ha really have that mindset. You really do know who your clients are. I think you do a wonderful job of, you know, um, broadcasting that message out, you know, kind of that net and, and getting people like that. And you guys um, do, I would say, feel like, you know, you guys know who you are and are very proud of that. Is that correct? Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I would feel like um, we've spent a really long time, like actually my whole background is marketing and um, business management. And so it, it kind of helped me learn as I went and just working with other photographers to really kind of hone in who we are and how to pour that into finding the people that we um, would really want to work with. And I was telling a bride yesterday, like, I don't get bridezillas. I just don't. Like everyone that I work with are people that I could have over at my house for a barbecue and a bonfire and, um, and people that I, I still keep in touch with to this day. I mean, we have tons of little nieces and nephews running around from our clients that we just adore. So yeah, I feel like we've really kind of honed in on who our people are and, um, been able to curate that really well. And that's been thanks in part to like coming in contact with so many amazing people when we got started and really being able to say, yes, this is who our clients are. If we could clone them, we would. So. No. And I think, uh, and I remember cause we used to do, I don't know. We used, it seems like we used to do a lot more stuff together just back before it's just busy and whatever now. And I remember we had gone to like some meetings or there was something up North we went to that was like a get together of, um, I think you were running some sort of, uh, like improving your website. I can't even remember what the premise of it was. And it was the first time I had gone out to the lookout lodge by your guys' old place. And you were talking about the the connection that that you felt like you really do make with, like you said, your couples and your brides and that like, you know, they trust you if they needed a videographer or they needed advice about this or that, that you really do feel like you have that strengthened relationship with them. How, what, where does that, obviously, you know, you're a mom and a family, but where does that connection come from that, that you feel like so natural in communicating and, you know, advising and helping and being friends with and all the stuff that comes along with that with your couples? Oh, that's a great question. So, I think part of it is because we spend such a long time um, really focusing on creating friendships with vendors and not just that empty networking. We actually go out and we um, spend time observing like our vendors, working with them, reading through all of their um, reviews and testimonies, and then just experiencing who they are as, as humans. And so we've created a list of people that we know that we can send our clients to that will treat them like humans and not just another paycheck. And that's really been kind of the premise that we've built everything on is we want to be able to send the people that we love to people that can take care of them like they're part of their family too. 
And I think that that's kind of where that's come from is um, we also do that with our own personal life. We try to pick our friends with people that are loving and giving and are not just takers, but they think of everyone else first. And that's sort of how we built our client or our um, vendor list as well. And then we're able to communicate that effectively to our clients because we know these people as humans. We know them outside of their business. And we can say, you know, like when we recommend you, we can talk about how you are very approachable and you're easy to work with and you'll listen to what they want. And you're not just going to come up and show up and not try to connect with them on a personal level. Like you're actually going to show up to their day and you're going to ask about them or you're already going to know things because of how your process is in working with your couples. And so we're able to communicate that with them when they're asking for recommendations. And I think just building like that transparency Um, We have very in-depth consultations with our clients that usually last around an hour and a half um, to where we're able to build that trustworthiness because they can find validity in what we're we're telling them based on what they've been researching themselves. So then when it comes time that where they're asking for a recommendation, they know that what we're going to tell them has value. So. Yeah, no, and it's it's so hard, you know. I think nowadays, uh, you know, people are are you know trying to get into the industry. They're always asking, you know, how do I get weddings, or I'm new at this, or whatever. And and like you said, it's it is about you know building those relationships and you know networking and getting to know, like you said, people on that personal level that like. You know, you don't always think about that when you're like, you know, business centric, like, well, I just got to get weddings. How do I do that? And it's like, well, no, it's actually like all this other stuff that really will will drive the weddings to you. And I don't know, you know, if everyone always thinks that same way. No, and I would agree. And that's part of why, like, when you launched this podcast, I was absolutely on board. And I wish I would have called in a long time ago, but um because this is the same mindset that we have is it's, it's not just important for us as vendors to be able to get to know other vendors to recommend, but then for this podcast that talks to couples and brides and grooms and people who are even thinking about getting engaged and being able to introduce vendors on a personal level like this, this is just another way of like having a curated um, list because there are so many people in our area um, vetted and not vetted, experienced and not experienced. And sometimes there's hidden gems. And I feel like this podcast especially gives a way for brides and grooms to be able to have that same kind of ability to network like we're given within all the groups that we're lucky enough to have in our area. Well, and it was like so funny because I had just posted, uh, I guess, Wednesday, you know, our latest uh, episode with Elizabeth. And you had said like, oh, my God, you know, we know her. Like, she's great. And it's like, well, I never you know, how would I ever have known, right? That like you guys and, but I'm like, well, that makes sense. Cause you know, we had a really great, you know, in-depth conversation and it would just make sense, you know, that like you would drive or whatever. It's just always interesting to see kind of those connections. Cause it's like, you never even know who all, you know, and, and learn more about people you do know, and then learn, you know, stuff about people you yeah. don't, you've never met at all. Absolutely. Yeah. Like it's, it's always fun for us too, because you have um, interviewed so many of our favorite vendors and we always feel like we know them so well, but then we listen to the podcast and we get to know them even more and we get to know them as their couples know them. And that's such an awesome thing for us as well, because then it makes us feel closer when we work with them next too. That's great. So, uh, in terms of, you know, you guys, you know, and photography, uh, you know, a husband, wife team, what, what do you feel like is, uh, is your strengths and what do you guys bring, you know, to the wedding day? What do you want, you know, that your clients to feel like you bring, what do you, you know, what do you want that, you know, impact or addition to be? Okay. So for me, I actually really, I thrive in chaos. Um, Josh, not so much, but I feel like that's where we kind of balance each other. (laughs) Um, So I thrive in, there's like a loose schedule, like we'll create like a huge timeline with our couples just so everybody kind of feels like they know what's happening. Um, But then on the day of, it's almost in my brain, the timeline goes out the window and we're literally like just watching the day unfold. Whatever happens, we can make the timeline happen within how the day comes about. Um, But for us, I would say that what we bring to the table is we've worked together on over 300 weddings 
And so it's almost very seamless at this point. I don't have to say anything and Josh knows what I'm looking for or what I'm needing. And um, there's just this process we have now. Um, Especially, it's really noticeable, I think, for us and for our couples and their families during family photos because we're able to get through everything so quickly and efficiently and um, get them back to enjoying their party that that's where I think that most of the families and most of our clients realize the value of what we bring. Um, So there's just like, we hope for a sense of calmness, a sense of control, a sense of being able to trust that even if something happens, they will never know about it. Um, And, you know, just a sense of like, if there's an issue, they won't ever have any idea. Um, Because sometimes things will come up like during photo time and, our couples never know about it. We just kind of manage it and handle it. And especially like when we have split families, that tends to be a thing and we can work with that super easily. Um, We also have the ability to manage like a lot of different personalities because we have a a bunch of kids. (laughs) So that's given us a whole huge amount of experience of being able to deal with and mesh personalities within a day effectively um, without causing issues. So that sense of calm, the ability to manage a whole bunch of people, um, the thriving in chaos. Um, Josh is an incredible um, photojournalist. And so he has the ability to anticipate moments before they happen. And he captures some of the most amazing candidates throughout the day of emotion and, you know, a single tear rolling down a cheek. And so between that and then I have the eye for detail um, and I have the eye that is kind of for the movement portrait end of things and to be able to get people to feel comfortable. And so between those two things, us working together creates a seamless experience for our couples where they have fun, they feel calm, they enjoy their wedding day, um, and they're still able to like anticipate that their photos are just going to be everything that they imagined. And it always cracks us up because we get people throughout the day that are like, I can tell you just love your job. Their photos are going to be amazing. And they've never seen our work before ever. And that just makes us giggle because we're like, that's hilarious to us. Like we've just made them feel so comfortable with who we are as people that they trust what we are going to output is going to match who we are at their wedding. So no, it's, we just, you know, really <laughs> build that. No, it's so funny because, I, I, you know, we have the same thing where, you know, we'll be like packing up and they'll be like, you know, great job today. You know, the uncle or someone will walk by and you're like, you have no idea what this is going to look like at all. You know, it could all, come uh-huh. you know, but like you said, if you, if you exude that ease, um, yeah. you know, it, they, it does, uh, people do, you know, consents, I think if, if the vendors are, um, doing what they're supposed to be doing or not. Oh, yeah. I think there's just that, like, they can, it's almost like some of them, too. Sometimes they'll start out the day not sure if we're actual pros and are going to deliver quality product. And those are the ones that tend to come up to us at the end of the day and be like, I just know that everything you're going to give them is going to be amazing. And it's just this sense of, like, we have proven ourselves to actually be experienced. And I think that's what most people want of their day. And they want their vendors to fit in. Um, and be part of the family. And I think that that's, you know, something super important to bring to the table. And that's what creates that trust for those people to walk up to you and say, Hey, great job. I know it's going to be awesome. So. Yeah. And you know, and like that's you, what, you know, yeah. Uh, that's why we like working with you. Oh. <laughs> you do the same thing. <laughs> well, no. And like I said, you know, cause you talk about, you know, like, the number of weddings and things. And, and, and I do too, cause I think it, I think it proves a point where, um, you know, and I think we've talked about this in the past too, where like, I, I feel like I am neutered in the, in the, the videography aspect of it because like, I can only be like, as I am the videographer that I am, right? Like I have the eye that I uh, have and, you know, you can like study techniques or whatever, but ultimately like, you know, we're limited as as the people that we are, but what you can improve on uh, is, you know, the, the ease and the experience and the customer service and kind of all these other things that hopefully like um, 
overshadow that. You know what I mean? Like at least in my case yes. where I'm like, I, you know, I can't, I, I see a lot of stuff and on Instagram and people and other planners and stuff I work with. And I'm like, man, that is way better than like anything that I, you know, I could ever do. Right. Like I, at this point, it, you know, in my life, I can't, you can't, teach that again or, or make that whatever. But, you know, I hope, and, and like you guys, and not that you're not as good, better photographers <laughs> than I am a videographer, but you know, there, there's a reason why people, uh, you know, keep referring you guys and, and hopefully me or other people we know is it's, it's, it's more than just, you know, it more than just the photos. It's also, like you said, that yeah. ease and, and comfortness. So when it comes down to hiring vendors like you and I, I feel like it is less about that, that end thing and more about like, Will I see, you know, I have to think about, I'm spending a whole day with this person. Sometimes that's eight hours. Sometimes that's nine hours. Sometimes that's 10 hours. I'm letting them into my intimate space. And at that point, the question isn't so much about the end product. Like the end product is just the cherry on the top of the um, ice cream sundae. And everything else is what makes it an amazing sundae. And that is what that experience brings. It's that comfort, the ease ability, the, you know, the way that you can understand who your vendor is as a person and how they're going to be in your getting ready room with you and all of your friends, how they're going to relate to the bridal party when you are doing portraits, how they're going to relate to your family throughout the entire day. And I think that that, that's why it's so important that you get to know your vendors through whatever means that is a phone call, a consultation, listening to podcasts, like getting to really know, can I stand A, this person's voice, B, how they talk, C, their mindset, and D, can I relate to them enough to spend an entire day with them? Even more of a weight than the end product. Because if you can handle all of those things and love who they are as a human, you're going to be able to connect to them in a way that they can create something amazing for you. Well, and that's the thing too, like you said, uh, where the end product is so secondary that like you could have a, a great photographer that's like a total a-hole and then you could get yeah. your photos back and they could be the most amazing photos in the world. And you're like, yeah, but I didn't like how that made me feel, you know, like I have yes, this. Um, absolutely. And then you could get, you know, like my, <laughs> like my subbar video back, but you're like, wow, like that was really fun though. So that like, it just, it's, it's weird how that works, right? Where it's so, yep. but your emotion is so tied to that. Yes. Yeah. I think, I think like the visual arts aspect, especially it, it definitely impacts how the receipt of being able to see those end products feel. Um, and I think that that's why like getting to know people like this is so incredibly important. And I don't think that a lot of people understand that necessarily when they're starting to book vendors. Yeah. You know, I know they're looking at prices. I know they're looking at pretty pictures. I know they're looking at all those things, but at, at the end of the day, this has to be the thing that's weighed more. So. No, it's funny. You know, I, I try to get, you know, pretty personal, you know, getting to know people on, you know, online or whatever, you know, being friendly with them, you know, before the wedding. And now it's like, we have a lot of these, you know, just because of everything going on, we have a lot of weddings getting, you know, pushed back or whatever. And it's like, shit, man, like we're going to like really know each other now when it's like, yes, <laughs> you know, which, I, which is a good thing. You yeah. know, I mean, like we just booked yeah. a Halloween like 2021 yesterday, which we don't do a lot of like Ooh. really far out. We just don't, we don't book a lot of like, you know, far out like that. And I'm like, I was like doing the math. I'm like 500 and whatever. I'm like, man, like we're going to be really close by the time this is, yes. but, but that's good though. Cause then you feel like, it is. and I, and I would say like when you guys walk into like, you know, the getting ready room or whatever, like they do look at you guys, you know, cause I've been there with you guys. If you've, you know, I can speak, you know, firsthand and it is like, Hey, like it's good to see you again. Like, come on in. Like what's going on. It's never like this awkward, like, okay, wait, what's going on now? Okay. We got to take photos, you know? Yeah. And we, we work really hard to make sure that that happens. Um, you know, some couples, obviously, we have a little bit less contact with, especially if we book uh, like a destination wedding and I don't do an engagement session and we never actually meet in person prior to their wedding day. But I feel like we keep enough contact with them and have always been open to being a resource at all times um, that we're able to really communicate like that comfortability from the start. So. 
Oh, you said I want to talk about, you know, and, and we don't have to get like super deep, you know, kind of up to you, but, you know, I know you have kind of a, you know, uh, a corporate background in, in marketing and stuff. And I just kind of want to like yeah. figure out like, how does that, you know, translating that into your own business, right. And being like, you know, how do we want to stand apart or what do we want to do or how do I want to do things? I mean, however you want to take that, but I do know that you have a wealth of knowledge kind of in your back pocket. Okay. So um, I feel like that's a super complicated question for me because it's weird when, when people ask me how that kind of translates. Um, so what I've done is I've built kind of an avatar for our couples and what that looks like. And um, first and foremost, obviously, like there's occasions where I say bride or groom and, and realistically, like I don't. I'm not saying that like just heterosexual couples, we're very LGBTQ friendly. And so that's why we've, we've made this switch to make sure that all of our language is very inclusive. Um, and so that, that was part of like the initial groundwork of creating that avatar is that that avatar could apply to literally everyone that we want to talk to. Um, and we sort of struggled actually in the beginning because we were listening to a lot of like, this is what you have to do to be successful. And this is who you have to market to, to be successful. And this is the kind of client that you want to work with to have a sustainable wedding business. And um, even with my background, like there's definitely when a lot of noise is coming at you, it can sometimes be hard to really determine what all should apply to you. And eventually, um, we decided that the kind of couples we wanted were really the couples that were a lot like us. And so that, that meant that we actually kind of shifted our pricing structure because we, you know, part of my background is understanding that pricing also kind of plays into your branding. You're going to attract a specific kind of people based on what your price point is. And, and sometimes there's like a zone in which you no longer talk to those people. So we worked really hard to make sure that that was in line um, with who our avatar was. Um, and then really just finding like, how do we talk to them? And so what I've done is I, instead I just sort of talk like I'm going to talk to my best friend and that's what I post about. And I, um, if you follow me on social media, sometimes you'll see posts that are really raw and that's because I've had clients of, you know, past brides, past grooms reach out and ask me in depth questions and talk to me about in depth subjects or even future clients. Um, and then I just pour those things out in those posts so that I'm very transparent. And we've tried to always be that way um, throughout the whole process. And so I feel like a lot of that has come from the marketing background that I had and the business management background that I had. I worked with um, a lot of large retailers and then I've worked with different kinds of studios um, that had different approaches to how they ran business. And I feel like that kind of shaped all of that ability to say, Hey, we have to have an avatar for who we want to talk to. We have to have a focus on who we want to work with. Um, and then just really honing that in. And what that's done is created a lot of referral business because of that. Um, and so we tend to then get people who are, absolutely people we would consider friends and family. Um, like we have a wedding this next summer that this is their um, third or fourth child that we have now photographed their wedding. Um, I have whole families I've done, all of the siblings, all of the cousins. Like you, you, we really do like focus on integrating a family mindset because of my marketing background. I want to make sure that I'm honing in with like that group of people and not trying to get everyone. There's enough weddings in our entire area that there could be hundreds of photographers and we could all stay busy with the amount of busyness that everybody wants to actually have. And um, so I feel like that's, it's all come from that big long story of like really kind of defining how to talk to others and decide this is the people that I want to be around. Um, just from so much exposure to um, customers and retail base and clients and studios and um, all of that, it's kind of helped us hone down, okay, this is our people and we're going to stay with our people. So, Yeah, I mean, I do think that's something that, that sometimes gets lost, um, you know, with planning and like you said, you know, uh, 
we're obviously budgets and everything else, but like, I do think sometimes people forget like there are, you know, real people behind these businesses, you know, behind these websites. And like, especially, you know, right now, like everyone is very human, like with everything, you know? And so yeah. it's, it's, and I do think that you guys do embody that, that, um, you know, like you said, even, you know, coming down to pricing and stuff, like it's so funny, like I'll talk to like other videographer, uh, other videographers and they'll be like, well, what's like, what's your rate? You know, what's your day rate? Like, what is your, what? And I'm like, honestly, like your rate or your whatever, like that's whatever it's going to cost to get you off the couch and out the door every day. And like, if you yeah. connect with people or if a project excites you, or if you have a connection with someone, you know, it's, it, there's more to it than just the numbers that go into a lot of the other, I think, transactions that people have in their lives. You know, like you go to McDonald's and you're like, okay, this costs whatever. Cause this is like a thing, like we are people behind everything, right? you know, behind these businesses. And like you said, um, being raw and being open, like I'm very open on social media about a lot of stuff, because like you said, you're going to be with us all day, you know, in probably one of the most emotional days of your life, you know, at least in the top, you know, 15 or whatever. And, uh, it's, it's really important to have that the more than just, you know, like a business transaction. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there is like, especially when couples are looking at vendors, I think it's important to really weigh how their social media feels. Um, and we try to, that's part of why we try to stay so raw and like I'll randomly share stuff about my kids. Even I try to not overpower obviously, cause you know, they're my kids. So of course I'm biased. Um, but we stay raw enough that our couples act actually, and this is where I know that this is so important. Our couples quote our, our bog, our, bleh, I can talk. Okay restate that one. Our couples quote our blog post to us. They message us about our social media posts. They, I mean, like they know what we're saying. They're paying attention because we have created that, like we are human too. And so it helps them connect to us in that way. And I've, I've never wanted to have a business in where I felt like I had to be fake all the time. Um, and, and actually when we started, we sort of were in that mindset of we had to play a role to be able to shoot weddings and we eventually realized we didn't. And so that's changed our marketing. It's changed our approach. It's changed how we talk to couples. It's changed how we post on things. Um, and we try to meet our couples wherever they are, whatever that means. Like we don't just focus on one social media. We're like on literally every platform and I mean, including TikTok. We just started TikTok this week because apparently that's where everyone is. So, um, you know, it's it's important to us that transparency be there all the time because, like you said, during especially things like this, we want them to know, like, there's a person behind the business. We feel for you, too. We understand that, like, this is hard for everyone. And so that we've been communicating through all of it um, as much as possible emails, phone calls, like my couples always know that as soon as they hire me, they have unlimited access to me. Like they could text me at, you know, 10 PM. And if I'm up, I'll say, Hey, go ahead give me a call. Like that's just how we run things. So. It's funny. I was talking to, uh, I won't throw them under the bus, but a, a, a co a friend of ours, a, a, an older DJ that had a corporate background uh, before yeah. he, <laughs> <laughs> and we were talking the other day uh, online and I, you know, I said, um, you know, he's always, this is a twofold kind of point, but, you know, he's always talking about, you know, uh, how he's got to get more on Instagram or I got to do this. And I was asking him cause I was posting the blog and I was like, Hey man, like, do you, like, do you ever blog? And he's like, well, no, like, yeah, but maybe I should. Cause I could like, you know, maybe find something that would drive some money with that. Or I think people post online and they're like, well, how can I like post on Instagram? Like I want to get bookings. Like how can I, um, you know, what, what can I do to like get bookings? And like, I post all the time on everything. Like I can say, I don't think I've ever had one person ever reach out to me on Instagram and say like, Hey, you know, we like your stuff. We want to book you. Um, or like read my blog and been like, Hey, we read your blog. Like we want to book you. But I do know that I have a a shit ton of, you know, brides and grooms and everyone else that, that book me and then follow that stuff. And it makes them, I know, feel more comfortable in the vendor that they have hired after the fact. 
And yeah. I, you know, and I think that sometimes that is lost when it's like, well, wh- what can I get from this now? And it's like, well, I don't, I don't blog to get weddings now. I blog to make the couples that I've shot, you know, feel good and, and, you know, let other people see whatever, but like, it, it, it's getting that mentality the other way, you know, of, of uh, assuring yeah. them like after they've booked you, do you get what I'm saying? Yep. Oh, absolutely. And it, it's weird because we, um, our blog is very resource based. So and I know that goes against like a lot of what photographers recommend or whatever. Like we have a lot of words on our website, <laughs> a lot. Um, but I also love to write. So that's just not ever going to change. I'm an over communicator. Um, and so we built like a lot of resource stuff and it actually, in the beginning, it was just, I wrote to write and I still feel like I, I sort of just write so that I can get it out of me. Um, but I'm also writing to answer questions that I know couples have. And we do have a couple of blog posts that people have booked us because they saw those blog posts. Um, but I would, I would agree with you that it's more of the after the fact is why we write them is so that couples have more of us before their big day and can get to know us before their big day. And and they can do that through those writings and they can do that because we're not just sharing other weddings and we're not just sharing other engagement sessions. Like we're actually sharing our hearts through these posts. So I feel like having that presence everywhere, the blogs, you know, on Instagram, on Facebook, it's not about getting the bookings. It's about showing who we are to you so that you feel comfortable with us. So. Yeah. And I mean, and sometimes, you know, I think where we live in this, you know, um, do with the, you know, the pricing and everything. And, and, you know, we know, like, we know what weddings cost and like, you know, what a DJ yeah. should cost or what, whatever. And where people don't, I do think that sometimes we, you know, lose, not like us, of course, but I think some people lose um, the mindset too of like, yeah, this, these are like huge purchases for a lot of people, you know, huge, huge, yeah. huge. And like, they want to know that they made the right decision, you know? Yeah. And I remember even, you know, when, when, um, Dorothy and I got, uh, married and, you know, we did a lot of work and I hired a lot of friends and then there were other people, you know, other vendors and stuff that I hired them. Like, I still worried like up to our wedding day, like, was our video going to be good? And was this going to be good? Yeah. And like, and I knew like all these people firsthand, right? Like I knew everybody, yep. I had worked with everybody and I still worried. And so imagine if you're in that same position that I was in, but you didn't know anybody and you just met them, you know, one time for an hour or did an engagement session. Yeah. It's hard. It's really hard. Oh yeah. And well, and that was Josh and I's experience and that's, it's really driven our, our wedding actually is um, our, well, our wedding has driven our wedding business. There we go. And because we, had just sort of broken into the wedding industry and hadn't really, I mean, we've booked a couple weddings, but we hadn't shot any yet by the time we got married. Um, and so we went through the experience as a true couple who has no idea. And it was very interesting for us because there was a lot of sticker shock. There wasn't a lot of education out there. Um, and on the wedding day, like I'm a, I am absolutely a type A. <laughs> like, there is no question about that. I am all about like, if I don't think it can get done right by someone else, I'm just going to do it. And um, I was struggling with that on the wedding day. Uh, and, and so was Josh. I mean, he was literally ha- like up in trees hanging lanterns because he didn't trust anyone else to do it. And that's such a rough experience um, to have gone through. And just having our experience with the vendors that we did hire and some things going fantastically and some other things, not so much. And then like really being able to observe the vendors we knew and how that played into their delivery versus strangers. And um, that, that really drove like our desire to be more transparent so that even if someone had never met us in person, they would feel like that they knew us and that we cared about them before they walked through the door because we saw a, dis- a discrepancy in how um, we felt serviced by those that we didn't know. So, yeah. No, I think that's great. Cause I do, I think that, you know, whether you're married or not, uh, you know, having gone through that, I do think, 
you know, being on the other side, I do think is helpful. I don't think it's necessary, but I think it's helpful to, to know, you know, I always say, I feel like I'm a better wedding vendor, you know, having been married and, and been on that other side. Cause I do think it makes you a little more empathetic than, um, like if it was just like a corporate thing or like another, yeah. you know, like a, like a, just a photo shoot or something, you know, it, it just, it, yep. it, it's hard to, it's hard to put yourself in those shoes unless you've been in them in some way or whether, or if you've had a friend that's been married and you've been in the, you know, it just, it's hard to know the other side of that unless you've been through it, Oh yeah, you know, and I, I yeah. think some people too. Well, and we have a lot of friends that, um, uh, are vendors that have gotten married during their process as well. And they say the same thing. It's absolutely shaped how they run their business. And some of them have made major changes because of it, because it's just, you just don't understand until you've been there Uh, because you don't realize how many vendors don't approach the education part or are all strictly business. And, um, and then the flip side, you you find these amazing people that maybe only have five reviews, but they're incredible humans that have great social media. They have a great presence. You feel super comfortable with them. And then you're, you know, you're taking a leap of faith and now you've found a hidden gym. It just, it goes, I feel like transparency is just such a huge part of choosing the right vendors for you, regardless of however many reviews someone has the comfort level and being able to see who they are before your wedding is so incredibly important. Yeah, it's funny. I uh, I think I've told this story before. I can't remember, but um, there's like a national like videographers Facebook group that's like, well, it's probably worldwide. You know, it's people just all over the place. And that there was this big thing one day, and it was someone was like, you know, I have a strict. Um, like, you know, I got to be paid. You know, three weeks before, and like, I haven't heard anything, and like you know, I sent him one email and like, I'm, you know, I'm not showing up or whatever. Like, this is ridiculous. And I was like, I just, you know, people were like, oh yeah, like screw them. Like, that's not, you know, how dare they? And I'm like, have you been married? Like the three weeks before <laughs> your wedding, like, do you happen yeah. to be a little stressful and you have family coming into town and you're trying to do last minute, whatever. And like, yeah. you know, like, cause I remember like the first time that we ever had, um, like a check bounce. And, uh, it's so funny. I actually, she was just, uh, Anna Brode was just, uh, we were just talking yesterday about this life and stuff. And this was like their wedding. So there'll be four years in, uh, June. And I remember like the first time, you know, I got this check bounce and I'm like, well, how, you know, what is going on here? Like, is this wedding even going to happen? Like, this is ridiculous. Yep. I can't believe like, yeah. and you know, I, I was like, how dare they, whatever, you know? And she just, wrote one extra check and didn't have enough in the thing. And it's like life happens, yep. you know, and if you would, it like, does. yeah. And if I had showed up and been, you know, a total, you know, turd about it, um, that wouldn't have been good. You know, and like I said, here we are four years later, still saying, you know, still talking and whatever. And it's, you need to, like I said, if you haven't been on that side, it, it's hard sometimes to kind of like, uh, realize, you know, what is happening there. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, it's, it's odd because I feel like we're kind of hitting that resurface of that same mindset just in the industry in general right now, because a lot of people are like, they never replied. They opened my email, you know, they've ghosted me. And I feel like there's, there needs to be an understanding that like when you've been there, you know, you're inquiring to a bunch of people, you are gathering information. You don't always reply to every email. Sometimes you can't remember who you replied to and who you didn't, or or it's uncomfortable to reach back out and be like, hey, you're too expensive. I can't book you. Um, so there just needs to be that, like, we're all humans <laughs> mindset. And I, I, I'm hoping that what we're going through right now kind of helps bring a little bit more of that understanding that no one is trying to screw anyone else over on either side and we're all just trying to be human. So. No, uh, I laughed. Uh, when I had posted sometime this summer, I had posted something about, uh, some photographer wrote something about being ghosted and like, you know, make sure you talk with people. I'm sure you saw it was, you know, I don't know, whatever was going around. Yeah. And like, I don't share a lot of stuff on Facebook anymore. That's like, um, mostly it's just like reposts of, you know, blogs and videos and whatever, but I had shared it and I was friends with one of the grooms on, you know, we were connected on 
Facebook. And then like, I mean, it's like two months later, we were at the wedding this summer and we're like, in, I couldn't remember, like we were in the middle of like groomsmen photos. Or it was like something like really random. And he was like, hey, Reed, like, um, I just want to let you know, like I read that thing. You should, I think he thought I was like sharing it, like really angry or something. Like I was just kind of sharing Oh gosh. It. He's like, I saw that. And he was like, you know what? I realized like I, I, I'm guilty of that too. And he goes, I went back and I made sure and I emailed back every one of the people that we ever contacted <laughs> with. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, but but I was like, you know, but it is just something to be aware of because, you know, yeah. and, and like you said, people get sticker shock or maybe they're embarrassed, you know, maybe they yeah. didn't, re- oh my God, I don't have $4,000 for, you know, chairs or whatever. I mean, maybe people are embarrassed about it. It is hard. My rule is if I've met you in person, um, email me back. Otherwise, I, I do yep. think it's okay. Uh, phone call, yeah. it's, it's iffy, but I have had the in-person ones. And I'm like, yeah. that, that's where I draw the line it is. I do think you require an email if you, if, if I've sat with you in person. Yeah. Well, and you know, and it's just, I'm totally fine. If someone doesn't email me back, I am going to send you a, probably like three or four emails just to make sure that you have found someone. And if you don't respond to me by email four, I'm done. But I just, I'm not following up to be pushy. When I email out, I'm following up to make sure they're taken care of. I don't care if they don't book me. I just want to know they found someone I'm and that use, they're okay. <laughs> that's great. I'm going to use like, that. Yeah. I'm going to use that to mask my, my, <laughs> I'm going to mask my pushiness and say, well, no, it's just sure. There you go. You're taken care of. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's ultimately, I just want to make sure that they did find someone and they're not just like totally stuck over here in sticker shock land. Because I remember when we were um, getting married, I was having a hard time um, finding a caterer and I had massive sticker shock over catering costs. You know, now that I'm in in the industry more, I understand a little bit better what that all plays into. Um, But as a bride, it's like, I definitely ghosted people. Um, And I even ghosted people I met with. And it wasn't intentional. It was just that like, oh my God, I know what my budget is. I am now freaking out. And even people that emailed me multiple times, but the vendor actually that we ended up booking, they did email me the fourth time. And they were able to break it down in that fourth email a little bit more of what the, the cost covered. And then they said, you know, we just want to give you also some questions to ask any of the other catering vendors you're considering so that you know you're booking the right vendor. And then just make sure that you book someone that makes you feel comfortable with the answers to all these questions. That's good. And that was it. And I, they had answered the questions themselves in the email, broke everything out. And it was, if it wasn't for that fourth email they sent, after I had ghosted them. I mean, I literally, I replied to none of the previous three emails. If it wasn't for that one, we wouldn't have booked them. And was, so, it, was it a good decision ultimately? Um, I don't remember. I didn't eat. <laughs> Josh ate a lot. So I would say probably, That's good. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't really, I was one of those nervous brides that I just like had no, appetite at all on my wedding day, which probably shouldn't be surprising since you know me in person and I am like tiny, but (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Um, But yeah, it was, it was definitely one of those, like I, everyone else enjoyed the food a lot. Like I watched people go back multiple times um, to eat food. So I'm assuming it was a good choice. (laughs) Um, But yeah, it was like, one of those things where if they had not followed up, if they had not treated me like I was a forgetful, embarrassed, whatever, like not understanding the industry bride, I would not have gone with them. And that's part of too, like that's why we've we've done what we do with our business and follow up so many times and we answer questions and we give them things to ask people and we just say, hey, we don't care if you book us, just know that you are making an educated decision. Don't just ask what someone's pricing is. Don't just look at their pretty photos, like get deeper than that and make sure that you actually like them and you trust them and they are being transparent with you. Um, and it's worked a few times for us to where we've gotten bookings. And a lot of the times when people have done that way, it's, it's 
they're, they forgot, they got busy. They couldn't remember who all they reached out to. Uh, you know, there's a couple businesses in the area that have similar names and they couldn't remember which one it was they actually wanted to book until the email came back through and they were able to check a, um, the website again. Um, so you just, people are human. And I think that's what that boils down to is just treat them like they're human. It's so funny the um, email that could, that Halloween wedding I booked yesterday. Uh, I hadn't talked to her in, you know, since kind of, I haven't been, you know, as as uh, pushy with my, you know, follow-ups, you know, in the last couple of months. Uh, and yeah. it, it had been a long time since we had talked and, and I, it was so funny cause I, she emailed, I'm looking at the email, I pulled it up uh, like seven forty whatever yesterday morning. So I'm like reading this in bed. And it's like, Hey Reed, like, I, I know we've been in touch. I really appreciate the, the cost communication. And I'm totally like, Yep. Like she went with someone else, like couldn't whatever. And I literally like was opening up. I have like, um, uh, like a stock, uh, you know, fall like, Oh, thanks. You know, for letting me know. And then like, we send like a little follow-up questionnaire if they decide, like if they tell us like the, you know, they don't want to book or whatever. And like, I'm getting yeah. ready to like copy this thing and I'm reading it. Cause it's like, I appreciate your patience, regret, like all this. And I was like, Oh no, she's actually booking me. Like I was so like, <laughs> I was so, uh, <laughs> and I emailed her back. And I said, I totally like had just scanned this email and I had just read the first part. And then I had seen like, you know, patience and regret. And I was, like well absolutely like they're you know this is going the other direction yep. uh and i was you know because it's hard i mean even after you know five or six years like however long you know it's still hard um you know with that rejection there's that was just the funniest side yeah. i wanted to, to point out was that's I, hilarious I, I, then i have like this uh, euphoric like yes <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome <laughs> yep patience pays off sometimes i tell you <laughs> that's fantastic so what do you, what do you want? You know, this is, uh, you know, the get to know your wedding pro podcast, you know, we, we've gotten you on now. What do you want uh, people to know about you guys? And that could be, you know, as it relates to work or, you know, personal or both or a combo, you know, what do you want uh, to get out there today? I mean, this is, you know, your kind of conversation, your episode. Oh man. Um, <sighs> not easy. I know. I know. That's like the hardest question you've asked me. Um, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of photographers out there and sometimes being able to communicate how you differentiate yourself to an incoming couple can be really difficult, um, especially because a lot of that just plays out in how the day unfolds. Um, thankfully, we have a lot of clients that have given us reviews. A lot of our clients go on our reviews and they will get really in-depth about how we are on a wedding day. But I feel like that's definitely where we struggle a bit is being able to communicate that ourselves to our couples. Um, because we approach the day so differently for every single couple, um, we have the mindset that no two stories are the same. And so we don't ever go into a wedding day with the same approach. It's never, you know, we're going to get this shot and get this shot and get this shot. We don't, I mean, I have one standard shot that I do at every wedding and that's the couple kissing as they come back down the aisle. But other than that, everything plays out differently for every single couple. Um, you know, how we're going to be able to serve them on their wedding day is different. Um, that's one of the, our big focuses, though, is we believe that our job isn't just to take pretty photos. Our job is to serve you as a couple. When we show up on, our, on your wedding day, it is to make sure that everything goes as flawlessly as possible, that you are enjoying yourself. You never feel like you're doing any work. You don't ever feel inconvenienced and that we are taking care of everything. And that means that we are checking to make sure that you're eating. We're checking to make sure that you're drinking fluids so that you don't pass out because we've had that happen. Um, we're using all of our past experiences to make sure that we can give you the smoothest, most incredible wedding day possible. Um, at dinner, if the servers themselves aren't dishing you up or holding your plate for you while you dish yourself up um, and carrying it to your table, then I'm going to do that. And if you haven't gotten a drink yet, and actually I prefer that my couples never have to even go to the bar themselves, um, we will keep your drink refilled as often as possible throughout the night. And our bartenders know that. They work with us frequently. Um, we are taking photos of every single detail possible. Um, we know photographers that don't necessarily do that, but we're very much of the belief that everything that you poured into your day 
is important to you. So we're getting those moments. We're focusing on the people that are your most important people, and that'll be your family and your wedding party and them interacting throughout the night and capturing moments that you are going to miss. Um, just because we know from our own experience that we see photos from our wedding day that we're like, wow, we didn't even realize that was happening. Totally missed that moment. Um, and so it's hard to kind of communicate that ourselves. And we really encourage people who are inquiring with us to really go through and read um, a lot of those reviews just because it communicates it so much better because uh, they can give real examples of ways that we have served our couples. Because on our website, that's just lip service. Anybody can say they serve their couples. But we want to be able to effectively communicate through someone else's mouth that we have actually done that. And if you go through and read our reviews, we we do. Um, but yeah, that's our main focus, I think. And what I really want, want people to know about us that makes us different is we, we're there to serve you. Um, our entire focus is to make sure that your day is the most incredible day possible. Um, and we serve you from the moment that you inquire. We are creating timelines for you. We are communicating with your other vendors if need be. We give you vendor recommendations. Um, I send you links of articles and um, podcasts that can be helpful to whatever it is that you're currently facing. I meet up with my brides or grooms sometimes to just have coffee and chat. Um, I'm there for you if you're struggling with how to make sure that everyone in your family, especially parents, feel recognized on the wedding day. Like, we're just there to make sure that everything is going well. And it's more than just photography for us. It's literally the entire day experience. Yeah. And I think um, if nothing else, kind of, you know, the times that we're kind of going through right now, I do think is, is going to focus more on that and, and just that um, the service from start to finish, you know, from booking through and just um, everything else, like you said, that goes into it and just, um, you know, uh, taking the photos, you know, whether it's like, I'm sure you've had to reassure, you know, uh, many couples and, and, and figure out stuff and reschedule and, you know, and it's, it's, it's a lot. And I, I think that it, it really is, hopefully this will um, help highlight, you know, um, the service that people are giving and, uh, you know, really make that uh, matter a lot as much as, you know, the photos or the video or whatever else. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cause it's funny. I was thinking while you were talking about, um, you know, serving and, 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 you know, like the drinks and the food and stuff. Cause you know, we work, like I always tell, you know, all photographers, you know, uh, I work with a different, you know, photographer, every wedding, you know, as I'm sure, you know, like you work yep. with different videographers and whatever too, but it's like, you know, we, we kind of, you know, we collaborate with whatever, but I do, um, you know, generally let them kind of dictate whatever, um, that, you know, the pace or the, you know, whatever, you know, yeah. kind of what they want to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's always, you know, because most of the time now we do work with, you know, most people that we know all the time. So it's not a, you know, surprise. But yeah, sometimes you'll see people and you're like, okay, like that's a different, you know, I'll be working with like a photographer. It's like, okay, that's a different way to handle that. Like, okay, you know, because I get spoiled, yeah. you know, working with, you know, like you guys and, you know, we all, um, just taking care of everybody versus like, you know, well, we got to get them out there again. We got to do this or we got to do that. You know, it's always interesting. You get, uh, I get spoiled with, uh, you know, being, cause it's good yeah. for, you know, it, 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 uh, the service, you know, that you guys are doing it, you know, it goes for everybody, right. The other vendors too. And yeah. like letting the DJ yeah. know what's going on or letting the planners and, you know, it's all that. It's not just, you know, you're not just serving the couple you're serving everybody well know. because we feel like serving the vendors too it is serving the couple you know what i mean like when we are able to um it, like with our posing style we we do such a movement based posing style that we know that we're creating content too that our videographers can then work with in addition to what they need to have and we we have learned to work quickly so that we are not creating more time in their timeline when they have a videographer. It's, it's creating a partnership, I think, throughout the entire day to let it flow the way it needs to, that we have learned to, that in serving our couple, it means serving our vendors. And whatever that means, we take photos for our vendors and we deliver those to them with unlimited use rights. Um, we make sure that, like you said, we are communicating with the, um, planner we're communicating with the dj we're communicating with the videographer um 
we never want them to miss a moment either. That's not fair to our couple. So I feel like service is, is more than just the couple by themselves, you know, serving the family, serving the wedding party, um, making sure everybody feels listened to, making sure you guys feel um, respected. So, yeah, I would say that, that that would be probably something that I would think that we would want out there more because I just can't effectively communicate that myself. Um, we have behind the scenes photos, but that doesn't do it justice, you know? <laughs> so, uh, and I'm glad that you've noticed or feel spoiled by that when we are with you. So, because we've definitely worked, worked with videographers that have demanded um, literally double the time um, so that they can get their own stuff instead of using anything that we've done. And it, it does make it hard when couples are not being served by everyone working as a team. No, I, I love hearing the horror stories about, um, you know, <laughs> or like, you know, especially like when you're in the summer and, and you have like either a back to back or one, you're like, Oh man, like the one yesterday yeah. or the one last week. And you're like, and you know, you just, um, yeah. Cause it's, it's hard and it's not, people aren't used to it. And I mean, I, I get it. I totally get it. And you know, when I worked in news and you got, we had in Seattle, we got four news stations. So that means most things we're at, you got four different sets of lenses there. You know, you got, yeah. uh, you know, or, you know, four photographers and maybe four reporters and maybe whatever. And you gotta, you know, you gotta play well and it's hard and yeah. you don't want to. Oh yeah. And like, <laughs> you know, and I get it. And yeah. or like, or we'll be try, like, I'll be trying to do stuff and like, I'll have my assistant and, you know, and it's just, just the way yeah. it goes. Um, we're, we're not going to always be able to shoot everything that, you know, the second you guys are doing it right, you know, you're going in and exactly. you're shots. You know, yep. and that's fine. But like, I'll look over at, at you know, the, the kids that are working with me and they'll be like, I'm like, we're good, man. Like, it's fine. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> you know, like we, yep. we got, if we get 40 seconds of these guys walking through the field, like we're going to be fine. Like it's, it's fine. Oh, yeah. But it's hard, you know, yep. that's even communication, like I said, even with my own um, people, you know. And, yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is a real quick story before we go. Uh, there was a photographer, uh, I won't even say who it is, but uh, we, I was training the new guy and we had, um, we were doing the, like they were, we were talking about them coming down the aisle. And they said, Hey, okay, yeah. I'm going to do this. And I said, perfect. Like, we're going to be over here and you get it. And then you'll get the shot and then we'll get it. And it'll be great. And like, they totally didn't at all. And it's fine. Like, it just happens. You get caught up in the moment, whatever. And you know, like I'm friends with this person now. Right. And they would never know. And like my, uh, Matt that I was working with, he's like furious. And I can't believe that. And I'm like, I mean, if we got three seconds of them coming, like, it's fine. Like, it's fine. Yeah. Like, what is the point yeah. of, like, burning? Like I said, I still talk with people every day. Like, what is the point of burning stuff ver yeah. you know, over? I mean, the couple doesn't know. They don't know. No. Maybe, maybe I know, but I can fix it. And, right. you know, it's fine. It's just not. But but it is it is hard to you can't teach like parents need to teach that, right? Like I can't, your parent yeah. needed to teach that like 40 years ago. Like I can't teach that now. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I think that there's just, you know, there's for the most part, most of the vendors that I have ever worked with, they have been of this, of a similar mindset. And I think that that's, you know, you're going to find people that they have at least some degree of service in their. That's why they do this. I mean, we wouldn't be doing weddings if we didn't have that, approach i think as a general whole <laughs> i would like to believe that that's my fairy tale land that i'm in uh, but i feel like the, the most of the people especially in our area and maybe i'm just biased because i've only met like incredible people um they believe in working as a team and as you know serving our couples and and creating that cohesiveness but i feel like we've had a great experience with most of the vendors that we've gotten to work with and we definitely obviously have favorites because there are some that we work better with than others. Um, but yeah, it, it plays a role too in how then you feel about the rest of the day as a creative. And I don't think people understand how important that can be. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Perfect. Uh, well, this is good. This has been great. Uh, it's been a long time coming. I, I appreciate you so much for coming on. And and I no just, problem. I, you know, it's busy times all the time, and especially now with you know family stuff and everything else. I I, I so appreciate you taking the time to sit down uh, and talk. Um, this is believe me, you know, I you know I've wanted you to come on for a long time, and it's definitely been yeah. good. Uh, so thank you for that. I'm I'm glad I could finally make it. <laughs> It took k- kicking everyone out to ride quads on the property to do this, but hey, it was worth it. <laughs> uh, I was talking to another photographer uh, a while ago, and they said, well, we were just waiting to come on because we wanted to make sure that you were going to make it because we didn't want to oh do my something. God. I mean, they were teasing, but I, you know, I mean, we're at 100, and this 102 episodes now, you know, I mean, yeah. it's, uh, no, it's funny, but I was just like, oh, I really appreciate your vote confidence. Like, thanks for that. Right? Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's so funny. No, I feel like podcasts are such a, a way of the future now. And especially this one, I feel like it has so much value because this is one of the best ways to get to know someone. You can sit in front of them and ask them all these scripted questions and they'll have all these scripted answers. But until you can hear them just like unfiltered, bring everything out of their brain, it's all going to be just a facade. You have to actually have things like this podcast to be able to go, okay, I just listened to that human for an hour. I totally vibe with them. I completely understand everything they're saying. They seem really cool. Like this podcast has a lot of value. So I'm sure it'll be around for quite a while. And it has staying power. That's the other part of it too, is just because you've interviewed someone once doesn't mean that you can't play that interview for years and years and years to come. Well, thank you for that. No, and and I do. And it's it's uh, what do they always say? Like you know, it's uh, like Howard Stern does all these like you know super long or like Joe Rogan or I don't know any of these guys that do like really long podcast. You know, like the real in depth. Yeah. And so it's yeah, we're the we're the, we're that of the wedding world. No, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Someday you might be. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're like not golf. <laughs> uh, yes, if I, with, with, uh, I can never leave my house again, but I'll be set because I have my microphone. Yep. And, uh, and there you go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, if people want yeah. more, uh, want to learn more about you guys and, and your site, and like you said, you know the blog and you know tons of resources and everything else, um, where would you have them check out? So, um, like I said earlier, we're pretty much on everything, including TikTok. Um, so all of our social media handles are G squared wedding. So just G squared wedding, no S. Um, but our website is G squared weddings.com. So, um, unfortunately years and years and years ago, when I signed up for Twitter, there was a limit on the amount of characters you have. So it became G squared wedding and everything else followed suit. So we are G squared wedding on all of our social media and then G squared weddings.com for our website. It works as long as it's, I, I'm in the, the, trying to tag people on Facebook nowadays and there's 18 different Sally's cupcakes yep. or whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> guys, so no, at least it, no, it's good. And, and it's, uh, and it represents you guys and it's great. So it's, it's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you again. If, if you're like Kate and you're interested in coming on a future episode of the podcast, you can go to www.bestmadevideos.com slash podcast guests. And that's a nice, uh, easy questionnaire to fill out. Uh, this has been another episode of Get to Know Your Wedding Pro. Check back next week for another wedding video interview. Thanks so much.